Chapter 1. In his early years, grime and graffiti art was the essence of Scutz's lifestyle. It wasn't a mere interest or an imposition. It was a choice deeply ingrained in his creative expression. From his clothing to the artist's speech and mannerisms, grime music was woven into every facet of the artist's lifestyle. During the artist's time in school and college, UK Garage dominated the music scene, but around 2002, the sound underwent a transformation. This period became the soundtrack of the artist's youth. Engaging in the art of rap, the artist honed his skills in writing lyrics and frequently visited local youth centres for rap battles, seeking authenticity in their narratives, often delivered in a witty or poetic fashion. Those gatherings with fellow rappers were highly anticipated, creating a sense of tribal unity as they formed a circle, synchronising their movements with the grime instrumentals playing and delivering impassioned lyrics. Chapter 2. Meet Scuts, a passionate graffiti writer and rapper hailing from the vibrant West Midlands region of the UK. It was back in 2002 when he first started tagging and using the spray can, initiating an, an insatiable addiction to expressing himself through graffiti art on walls. In those early days, Scots embarked on this artistic journey without a guiding hand or formal instruction in how to use the spray cans. He was a self-taught artist, learning through a process of trial and error. It wasn't until a few years later that he would finally cross paths with other graffiti writers from London. Yet even in those early stages, Scots had a visual sense of what he aimed to create. His foundation was laid during his later school years, where he would spend time in the school library and art room reading art books. One of those books was the influential exploration of graffiti culture spray can art by Henry Chalfont and James Prigoff. In 2002, he never envisioned himself as a graffiti vandal, yet circumstances unfolded that steered him towards this unconventional path of self-expression. It was an era where being young and black often meant facing police harassment the stopping and searching of black boys was prevalent across the UK. Individuals of black and Asian descent were disproportionately subjected to police stop and search tactics. This unjust practice, deeply rooted in England's history, revealed instances of officers overstepping legal boundaries in their searches. Regrettably, this pattern persists even today. His experiences shed light on a persistent issue within society and being black in England. Chapter three, in a stroke of serendipity, Scutz's path intersected with destiny as he made his way to a Christian youth camp, Soul Survivor, in southwest England near Somerset. It was there that he encountered C4, a London graffiti writer. For Scutz, he is unequivocally the personification of a London graffiti writer. This encounter proved pivotal for Scutz, as the digital landscape of social media networking and online graffiti communities, as we know them today, had yet to emerge. C4 served as his gateway to the vibrant street life culture of London's graffiti art scene, imparting not only its norms but also introducing him to other graffiti writers. With a newfound passion, Scuts returned to the West Midlands, a dynamo of creative energy. Weekends became a pilgrimage back to London, while summer holidays unfolded in the heart of C4's welcoming family. Chapter 4 For years, Scuts immersed himself in the world of graffiti, leaving his mark on the streets and honing his artistic skills. However, a pivotal moment arrived when police raided his residence in pursuit of his alleged art crimes. This led to multiple arrests during his time on the streets as a graffiti writer. graffiti art has its illicit underbelly, a side that wearied him, yet the scarcity of legal spaces for artistic expression added an extra layer of frustration. It was a desire to grow in his craft, but he was hindered by a lack of community spaces to paint. As a young, impassioned individual, Scutz found himself contemplating his future and his educational aspirations. A life-changing near-death encounter in a head-on collision left him bound to a wheelchair. This moment of stillness afforded him the space to contemplate a new trajectory. He focused on his artistic evolution. Chapter 5. Following his graduation in 2008 with a Bachelor of Arts degree with honours in Fine Arts, Michael wasted no time. 
He eagerly sought representation from contemporary art galleries in major cities like London and Birmingham, recognizing its pivotal role in propelling his career as a British abstract painter. However, the gallery support he sought never came. It's similar to the music industry, where major record labels hold the keys to certain opportunities. It was a difficult time to be ambitious during the global financial crisis. There was mass unemployment, and many local businesses in the West Midlands struggled to stay afloat and had to cut costs, including reducing their workforce, a time when many doors seemed to close for the young British abstract artist. Undeterred, Skutz and his graffiti friends from London took matters into their own hands, orchestrating an exhibition. It was a grand undertaking, showcasing ambition and a DIY attitude. The Waterloo Graffiti Exhibition in London was a testament to their determination. Although none of the media outlets wrote about it, Michael actively participated in local exhibitions and found success in selling his work. Today, the landscape has evolved. Social media has granted him the platform to promote his own paintings. The consistency he maintained over 20 years has paid off.